you know that a basis is an extremely useful concept in linear algebra and beyond. We can find the basis if you have a subspace in Rn. Can we find it too if you have to deal with a general vector space? For a basis, we need the idea of a span. We know that one already for a general vector space. But we also need the notion of linear independence. So how does linear independence work in a general setting? That is what you will learn in this video. You know linear independence for factors in Rn. A set of factors in Rn is independent if and only if the equation c1 v1 plus up to ck vk equals zero only has the trivial solution. Well, for a general vector space, it works exactly the same. A set of factors v1 up to vk is independent if and only if the equation c1 v1 plus up to ck vk equals zero only has a trivial solution. So that's the same equation as we are used to. But be aware of the zero over here on the right hand side. This is zero in the case of factors in Rn would be the zero vector. Well, if we have uh, as a vector space our polynomials, then this zero is the zero polynomial. So the polynomial which is zero for all t. And if we would be dealing with matrices, then the zero would be the zero matrix. So be careful with the zero on the right hand side over there. We also have a similar theorem. A set of factors in Rn is dependent if one of its members is a linear combination of the other members. It's the same for factors in the general vector space. A set of factors is dependent if at least one of its members is a linear combination of the other members. And that is what we can use in a few examples. We'll start with three polynomials, v1, v2 and v3. I have a set of those polynomials. Then we observe that this third one over here equals v1 minus 2 times v2. So we observe that the third polynomial is in a combination of the uh, first two. That means that the set consisting of those three polynomials is dependent. And if we look at the second example, S2, where we have three functions, the functions 1, cosine squared t and sine squared t. So if we look at the continuous functions, then here we see that the sum of the cosine squared plus the sine squared, so if we sum them as functions, we get the function 1, which is the first one. So here we see v2 plus v3 equals v1. So again we see dependence relations, so S2, S, uh, the set S2 is dependent as well. Can we also find independent sets? Well, if we look at the polynomials, there's a very important independent set. The set consisting of the polynomial 1, t, t squared, t cubed, t to the power 4, etc., etc., up to t to the power n, until some power. So, how can you see that this set is independent? Well, look at the definition. So, you look at the equation c1 uh, plus c2 times t plus c3 times t squared up till uh, uh, the last term with the t to the power n equals zero. Well, this zero in the uh, right hand side now should be the zero function, the function which is zero everywhere. But on the left hand side we have a polynomial of the nth power. Well, we know if you have an nth or the equation that such an equation has at most n real zeros. It's the main theorem of algebra. So this function on the left hand side is at most its n position zero and certainly not everywhere. Uh, it will only be everywhere zero if you choose all your weights to be zero. So, and then we know that the only solution of the equation uh, c1 uh, uh, times the f 1 etc equals zero is the zero solution. So then we know that our set 1 t t squared etc is an independent set. And that uh, is an example which we will be able to use much uh, more often.